Today we're going to make a tiny kitchen that works inside or out. This video is sponsored by Blue Apron, which allows you to create delicious chef designed recipes at home, or in our case, while you're camping. Click on the link in the description box below and the first 50 people to sign up will get $40 off of your first two weeks of Blue Apron. I cut two pieces of 3 quarter inch thick plywood, 74 inches long and 19 inches wide. I glued these two pieces together to make a countertop that is now one and a half inches thick. I got a top mounting stainless steel sink from Moen and cut a hole into the plywood with my jigsaw. The glued up edges weren't quite even, so I used a belt sander to flatten them out. I rounded over the square edges using an orbital sander and 120 grit sanding pads. Three coats of Minwax polyacrylic applied with a foam brush sealed the countertops. I cut seven inch long pieces of one and a half inch aluminum angle to make brackets that allowed me to attach the countertop to the sawhorse, which is going to serve as a stand. The screw holes that'll mount the brackets to the underside of the countertop can really go just about anywhere, but for the holes that are gonna go through the sawhorse and through the brackets, I want to make sure these are lined up in pairs. Now there are probably a lot of different sawhorses that would work for this project, but here are the ones that I like using. They fold up nice and compact, but are made out of heavy duty steel. The legs are adjustable and have positive stops at different increments. So I placed the folding metal sawhorse in the center of the underside of the countertop and then marked its location. I screwed the brackets into place and then marked the locations of where I'll need to drill holes through the sides of the sawhorse. The sawhorse is steel, so I drilled small pilot holes first before switching to a drill bit that's large enough to let a quarter inch bolt pass through. The water supply is going to come from a five gallon jug. So I got this dolphin pump, which is meant to be mounted right on the neck of the jug. I wanted to make this a little bit longer so it could go through the sink. So I cut a piece of PEX tubing and it fit right into the tubing that came with the pump. The tubing alone isn't enough though. I need to find a way to extend the neck of the water jug up and so that it goes into the pump itself. So I use some PVC pipe and this rubber coupling device with two hose clamps. I can now just place the jug underneath the sink and insert the PVC pipe with the PEX pipe in it right through the sink hole and into the jug where it's then tightened on with the rubber coupling and hose clamps. I got a vanity sink drain from Home Depot and screwed that right into the sink. I thought a soap dispenser would be a great idea for the other hole in the sink because when you're out camping or in the field, it's nice to have Purell on hand so that you can serve water. The drain in the sink wasn't quite long enough to safely get the water into the bucket, so I added a short piece of vinyl hose. For indoor cooking or whenever electricity is available, I got this really nice single burner hot plate. After pre-drilling some holes, I screwed in some hooks to the underside of the counter to hang pots and pans and a dish rag. And now to test it out with a little help from Blue Apron. Blue Apron delivers all the farm fresh ingredients you need right to your doorstep in exactly the right proportions. No trips to the grocery store and no waste from unused ingredients. They offer two types of plan, the two person plan or the family plan, and there are now eight recipes to choose from each week. Jesse and I got the two-person box that came with three awesome meals. We decided to start with some beef stew. But before we started cooking, we took advantage of the fact that the sawhorse's legs can be adjusted. So we raised it up a little bit and added a mini fridge underneath to store the ingredients we weren't using. Now I'm definitely not someone that likes to follow instructions, but these Blue Apron recipe cards are really easy. Now the recipe called for the potatoes to be baked, but since we didn't have an oven, we just fried them instead. The entire meal only took me 26 minutes to prepare, and I only got one pan dirty. Yay, no dishes. So while I'm cooking, let me tell you a little bit more about Blue Apron. 
It ships to most of the country. There's no commitment. You can skip or cancel the service at any time. And prices start as low as $9.99 per serving. The ingredients are incredibly fresh and sourced from local suppliers and artisans. And each menu is between just 500 and 800 calories per person. Now personally, in addition to using them at home, I like to use Blue Apron boxes whenever I go camping. Because when space is limited, it's really nice to have just the right amount of ingredients and they already come packed really tightly in a insulated package. So seriously, if you got a camping trip coming up or Burning Man or anything like that, consider a couple Blue Apron boxes and you'll be all good to go food-wise. The beef stew was amazing and it came out exactly like the way it looked in the picture. It takes less than five minutes to set up this kitchen. We're going to use it on the job site while we build a tiny house out of shipping containers. When we're out in the field, we'll probably end up using a Coleman propane stove instead of the electric cooktops. I'll put links to all the products that I used in the description box below. This was a fun and easy build and I'm excited about doing more DIY camp projects in the future. If you got some ideas or something that you'd like to see us make, be sure to let us know in the comment section below. So even though we designed it for outdoor use, I also think it'll come handy indoors as well. There's occasions where we're filming in a warehouse or in a large photo studio that doesn't have a kitchen or anything. And it's kind of cool to have a kitchen that you can just throw in the back of your car or truck. If you want to see what we're working on next, be sure to follow me on Instagram. I'll put more information about this build on my website, homemade-modern.com. Check out some of our other videos and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.